To install the bracket for a CPU cutter, we're going to need to remove the stock clips that each held on with two screws. Then we've got one of these brackets to go on at the top and one at the bottom. And importantly, you are going to want to install the crack rail ground. So these standoffs here, you're going to want to have them towards the middle of the motherboard. Then you're going to secure it using the four screws that came in the bag with the bracket. If you're going to be installing on an Intel motherboard, the first thing you're going to do is install the backplate. So for LJ1200, you're going to want to make sure these standoffs are pushed towards the middle. For 1700 and 1851, now I've got an 1851 socket here, you're going to want to pull them all to the outer setting. And then they should line up with the holes in the back of the motherboard. Then you just need to get the bag of Intel screws. And we're going to screw one into each corner with the longer end facing up the way. So just before we install our CPU cooler, I'm just going to pass the cables up and through to the back. And then as we lift the radiator up into place, I'm just going to pull the cables tight. And we'll secure the cooler into place at the top using the included short radiator screws. So we've got two fan headers at the top of the motherboard. The grey one is our CPU fan header. So I'm going to bring the PWM cable coming from our fans through and we'll get it plugged in. And at the top right of the motherboard we've got an ARGB header so I'm going to bring the ARGB cable through and we'll get it plugged in. Next we're going to add some thermal paste to the centre of the CPU. It is included with the cooler. We need to remember to remove the plastic protection from the cold plate. And then we can go ahead and line our pump up with the bracket we've installed on the motherboard. And we just need to get a thumb screw onto each corner. And then we'll just tighten up each thumb screw and turn with a screwdriver. Next I'm just going to read all the cables coming from the pump through to the back of the case. Just below our CPU fan header we've got our CPU opt header. So I'm just going to pass the 4 pin PWM cable back through and we'll get it plugged in. At the bottom of the motherboard we've got two USB 2.0 headers so we'll go ahead and bring our USB cable through and we'll get it plugged in with the USB text facing up the way. Now the RGB cable coming from the fans and the radio that we already plugged into a header on the motherboard has a daisy chainable connector coming from it. So we'll remove the plastic cover and we'll take the RGB cable coming from our pump, line it up and push into place. And we can then remove the plastic protection from the pump. Just head over to the link I've got in the video description to download Thermaltake Segment LCD software. All you're going to do is install it and then the screen on the I.O. will work. You can customise what actually comes up on the screen but you can change the sensors for each of the options. Music